awkward. I mean, Vasco, do you want to first t- tell us a little bit about who you are uh, and where you studied, what you studied, and uh, about your film that you made? Sure. So um, I'm Portuguese. I, I started my career in Lisbon, working in film and, and studying film. Um, before I, I decided to travel for a couple of years, uh, I, I knew that to be a good storyteller, I had to get out of my comfort zone and, and have life, more life experience. Uh, so I traveled for a couple of years. I put myself in a, uncomfortable situations. I, I, I worked out of the industry. I had lots of jobs out of the film industry so I could understand other realities. I, and then in the end, I decided that was time to study. I, I moved to London. I, I began my, my degree in film. Uh, I, I've directed a couple of projects in my first year. It was really good, but I, did, I knew that I, I, had, I had to develop my knowledge in the commercial side of filmmaking. So I moved to Madrid for one year. I studied abroad in Madrid for one year and I studied law, marketing and, and business applied to, to film. Uh, was really was a really good um, development in my career in that sense in the commercial side of filmmaking because even though I can be a really good storyteller but I, 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 I need to sell that story right like I'm not telling stories just for my friends so it was a, a year just focused on how to sell my stories it was really really good for 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 my career so I came back to London I and I re, uh, directed this project Yard Kings. Uh, which was really special for me. It was my biggest project until to date, and it was really special for a couple, for for several reasons. And we can in a further uh, it, we can we can further discuss it after. But yes, as you said, uh, the pandemic uh, it unfortunately didn't allow me to present it to showcase it to to the industry. And I was counting on that because there, there would be uh, opportunities there, job work opportunities. And now I'm saving it for the festival circuit in 2000 in, in 2021. But yes, it would be a great opportunity. Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, been the case for many people, like the other people I've spoke to so far. I think I think some people haven't known whether to. I don't know, with some projects, it's nice to sort of close that chapter of your life and move on, whereas a lot of people are in limbo and now having to um, consider how they're going to show their work, maybe like you're doing, waiting for film festivals later on, or whether you just put it up online. I mean, I did watch it actually online. Um, Is that something you're like more so against, but you had to do it? Or, you know, are are you okay with doing that? No, um, you were not supposed to watch it. <laughs> was I not? No, because I, it's online because I'm. I'm. It's a joke. Uh, it's oh, online because. The same. Like, how did I end up watching it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not supposed to be online. That's why I was saying this. Because it's online now because I'm applying to a master degree at the National Film and Television School, and and they need the they need to see the film online for my application, and that's. That's why it's it's online right now, but I'm gonna remove it because to apply to the festivals we cannot have it online, so mm-hmm. it's temporary. But I'm glad you've seen it and and so we can have a you can ha- you you know the context yeah talk about yeah. specific you know because you've seen it so that's good. Yeah, no, I I really enjoyed it actually. It was. Um... It, it made me think, actually, I know you just mentioned you were, you know, you didn't necessarily, you don't necessarily want it to be online. It was kind of just happened like that. Um, but I noticed with different universities, um, some have made a real effort to, you know, help students out and give them that opportunity to have that degree show where the world can see their work. And people like me can approach people and say, hey, do you want to be a part of a project? Because that's, that's the best part of a degree show a lot of the time to stand with your work you know proudly but also have people come past and you know have those little conversations and who knows where they might lead um nadine did your which university was yours 
Um, so I attended Ulster University for both my um, undergrad and my master's. Um, okay. Originally graduated uh, in 2017 and okay. ended up a job in a job as a digital marketing assistant. Nothing to do with animation for quite a while. Um, but it was more 3D uh, orientated, my undergrad. And um, as much as I enjoy animation, it wasn't really something that I felt as passionately about. So um, my course director around the start of 2018 uh, informed me that he was going to be starting an MA project and it was going to be 2D based. So I actually left my job and went back to uni to do that. And um, as I was saying to Ollie just before, um, I was due to graduate actually in December of last year, but because of some health reasons, only ended up finishing in May. And um yeah, I um, it it's been just a crazy year so far. Like um, February, I was actually working with um, Animation Studio Lab, uh, mm. and we a group of thirteen of us made Wet and Soppy, which um, premiered at Galway Film Fla there just a couple of weeks ago. So as um, Vasco was saying, like it's it's weird having film festivals and normally you'd be in attendance and it'd be this great celebratory thing but when you're at home it's kind of it's hard to describe because it's exciting but you're not there mm -hmm. like normally even with deadlines and hands and hand ins and stuff you're like glad when it's over it's like this celebration this stress off your shoulders and you get to do something nice but this year it's just been okay I can close the tabs on my computer and go into a different room <laughs> yeah no that that's I, I don't think you can ever get rid of the joy of closing loads of tabs on your yeah. computer <laughs> that's uh, true good so, for you yes mate. it's done <laughs> um but what you're saying is like kind of representative of like the whole student sort of uh, experience now whether people at arts or creative unis or not um no one's had their graduations mm -hmm. and having it online um just isn't the same in the same way that sometimes for example the last person i spoke to did fine art and he said people my art doesn't translate online you know you can't i don't know he, he just the feeling at the the emotion that the literal you know on the canvas he said you cannot experience it the way i would like you to online yeah. Um, so that film festival you just mentioned that was online yeah this year it was online so is, has that been kind of representative so sort of, i'll put this out to both of you has that have a lot of film festivals gone online or have a lot just cancelled it um a few of the irish um events like uh for animation there's the dingle festival every year and it was cancelled unfortunately so uh no fun for anyone this year um I was surprised the Galway went ahead and to be honest at the start of lockdown we were kind of hopeful we might have been able to experience it in person but of course things just didn't play out that way um, so it's it's kind of sad because the team that worked on Wet and Soppy came from all different areas and we were kind of hoping that would be like an opportunity to come back together and celebrate what we were able to create so it's disappointing but maybe there'll be a chance in future. Vasco, have you had the same with sort of all the other people that worked on yours? Because like you said, it's your biggest project to date. Uh, there was probably quite a lot of people that were involved. Yeah, around um, 20 people in the crew mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 30, 40 people uh, that uh, helped along the way. Uh, investors as well we had we didn't have the opportunity of having a, a, right, um, a rap party and that was really sad. Um, we couldn't gather and just have a drink to celebrate. Not even the fest. I'm not talking in, even about the the, the the final year events, but just being together and laughing on the experience and remembering stories and and having a, a drink about it. It's our graduation film, and we spent money on it. We we didn't sleep nights and nights and nights, and we cried and we screamed and we laughed and in the end we couldn't have a drink on it and that's super sad but one day we're still gonna meet all together and we're probably gonna make another film and and have our our party but mm. i was saying about the festivals um it's 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 good that they are still happening online but 
it's 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 um, heartbreaking because we we make we shoot we shot this film for for the big screen, you know, <laughs> and people watching it on a on a laptop screen. It's I know that's the new generation and that's how it's going to be. But I would like to have the experience of of having an audience in in the in the in that big room watching it, um, and also going to personally to a film festival as as you guys were saying as well. It brings you a lot of opportunities. Uh, you can network, and I think that's that's a huge part of the experience: um, networking and getting opportunities in, in general. We 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 wouldn't have we we couldn't we could we cannot have that online as well. So yeah, it, it's yeah no it's 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 such a, a shame i mean last year one of the great things so basically i went on like a road trip around the uk and i went to countless degree shows i met so many people and it was so interesting um and i think degree shows are actually um in, in terms of the world of art and um whether you you know that's like film or animation or what you guys are talking about it actually gives a lot of uh, opportunities to see a lot more diverse work and um, degree shows because obviously you have students from all around the world um, and they've been given the opportunity to present their work, which they might not get in maybe larger film festivals or in uh, more sort of established art galleries and things like that. You know, it's it's kind of like democratic in a way, um, you know, and that's been taken um, and that sort of representation's been taken. I mean, I'll try and do something to get help people get their work online on our website if they would like. Um, obviously, not your whole films, but like if you want to write a little bit about what you did um, and, uh, and and what your hopes and ambitions are, because I still want to, you know, help people... Uh, articulate themselves and if that can maybe give you an opportunity to to do something more I mean you, uh, I, I'm not saying that you two are going to work together but if I can bring people together that you know either have similar interests or are vastly different you know at least that's another opportunity because some of the people from last year that we worked with actually ended up they've sort of stayed close and they've like met up with each other um, and stuff like that so I like that sort of community of people and that you guys know a few more people in the, in the world um, what sort of things have you got planned now because like you said Vasco you might do your films in next year's festivals what in, in like right now what, what are your plans now well I, I got a, uh, recently I got accepted for an interview at the NFTS which is quite a, a huge progress in my career if I if I can get an offer for for the course, the the directing fiction course, it's one of the best in the world. The NFTS is is one of the best schools in the world, and if I get accepted, I have the opportunity of directing three more films with big budgets, big budgets for me, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and and I can get an agent as well, and. I can make my way up in the industry that way. That's my 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 dream. That's my my plan A at the moment. Since I got the interview, I'm motivated and I believe on it. If I don't get in, I really need to think about my life. Maybe <laughs> uh, probably I'm gonna try to to get in to get some some job in the industry. I have some connections, so it's possible, but. I don't want to stop directing, and if I get into the industry, I'm, I'm probably going to be a production assistant or a second AD or whatever, and I don't want to stop directing, so that's my biggest goal, biggest priority at the moment, is to direct. If I want to be a director, I need to direct, I need to make as many films as possible all the time, and that's what I'm focused on. So that's my, my plan, is, is to, mm -hmm. whatever happens, I'm going to direct everything it's good you know to you know you've got to make those experiences and whether they go you know well or badly when you're young it's, you're right you need to sort of do those things as much as possible and i think the greatest um shame with students actually are you do something really cool now 
Um, but when you have to go into the professional environment, you kind of lose a bit of yourself sometimes. Um, like you were saying, you need to think about your life, uh, how to earn money, how to live. Um, and unfortunately, then stuff that you dreamed about can sort of sometimes get, you know, pushed to the sides. Um, so best of luck with getting you with your interview and stuff, because that sounds amazing. Yeah, definitely. Best of luck. <laughs> um what about you, Nadine? We talked a little bit about what you'd been doing. Like, I've been quite similar to you, like, sort of just taking moments to be like, this is crazy. And especially when you finish university, I want to say that as well. Like, it can feel like a bit of a slog. And especially, yeah. <laughs> like you were saying, where you were set to graduate and you didn't graduate when you were supposed to and, and stuff like that. It must have been like a kind of a relief, but then the whole world goes mad and yeah like honestly I remember sitting on the day last December that was supposed to be my graduation being like oh it would have been really nice to have a Christmas graduation little did I know that you know that might actually end up happening this year if it happens at all um yeah like um to be honest this is going to be my studio for the foreseeable future because even with everything that's going on um when you're uh, I'm uh, autoimmune or immunocompromised I should say and um, all those things are starting to start um, lift back up uh, for people like me it's not as simple as oh okay everyone's open and up again so away I go to try and find a job in a studio there's certain personal um, risks that you have to sort of weigh up and um, so uh, I enjoyed getting to work collaboratively on Wet and Soppy in February. Um, after that, I came back and started working on my own sort of personal project to um, finish off my degree. It's sort of a D&D fantasy-based animation. Mm-hmm. Um, and just more recently, I actually got informed that I was lucky enough to receive a grant from AN Artist and Freelance Foundation. So they going to support me to be able to upgrade my home office so I think what's next on the cards for me is continuing to work on personal projects maybe focus on one that deals with the emotional turmoil and sort of processing of what everyone's collectively has been through over the past few months but I'm not to say that I'm not going to look out for industry jobs as well like anytime I've seen something I'm just sort of throwing the cards on the table and seeing what happens you know opportunist in that way (laughs) what's the biggest uh, sort of inspiration would you say for your work then because the reason i did put you two together like i said because you is aspects of storytelling and i like i like having a contrast in these things and the subject matter of both of your work was very different like you said uh, just mentioned there you know it's a bit different to what vasco's doing what is sort of inspirations behind your work I mean, I love anything fantasy based. Um, I really feel, especially in the past few months, everyone's been turning to different shows, programs, creative uh, creative outlets to sort of process what's been happening. And I want to get as far away from the real world as possible. Um, but some of it is more... Um, recognizable certain themes spirituality and stuff I love to explore that as well because at the end of the day every artist creator is showing a very intimate side of themselves when they put their work out there and although it might look vastly different the the meaning's still the same it's me wanting to share something with someone else yeah I think everyone can can sort of relate to that I mean anything so I do aspects of uh, stand up and sketch comedy and even though that's like not typically a thing where you go um you, you want it to be sort of a bit more emotional you just want it to be funny a lot of the time mm-hmm. it's also you saying I, I think this is funny or like mm-hmm. this is, and it's very reflective of like your life you know I think this is good or I think this is funny or I think this is important enough to spend the time um and yeah it is very personal is that something that you feel as well through your work Vasco? Well, it's funny because we are um, kind of the opposite in that sense. Uh, you you try to portray this fantasy magical world, and I try to do the opposite. I try to portray reality as gritty, as real as it is. 
So we adopted uh, these documentary techniques, these, these, all this aesthetic, this homemade video style aesthetic that we added to the, to the, to the project just to make the audience feel that they are actually with those characters in that particular situation is a, as it is a, as it, a portion of the, those people, people's lives, realities. And that's my motivation, really. It's, it's to represent these people's lives as real as it is and make you wonder about it. It's almost as, as you were watching a reality show in a way you know i'm trying to achieve that in a way but obviously dramatize it and and it's a fiction in the end of the day obviously but even my actors they our actors they were chose chosen in that sense i didn't want professional actors i wanted them to improvise and i wanted them to come from those specific backgrounds so we cast those two kids from from this one kid, he lived next to a scrapyard, and I wanted I wanted the kid to feel at home. And this kid, he grew up in a scrapyard. So when you watch the film, he's acting. He's not acting. He's being himself, and that's what I was looking for. Um, which is completely the opposite, I guess, of of, Na, of Nadine's storytelling style. So I don't, I'm not sure. Um, what do you think, Nadine? Well, um, I I do really like the fact that you're saying that you wanted to be gritty and realistic. Like, there's certain storytelling that is, it's very, it resonates with the audience because they see themselves not only with the characters, but as the characters. And although my personal approach would be very removed from that, I always want to keep those themes that people can relate to like personal struggles and put them in this environment where they might not necessarily be as self-aware as that could um that effect that your type of storytelling would have um but hoping to achieve that same outcome where they think about it long after they've actually consumed the film and processed it and thought about it it's just something that they're like yeah actually i i know how that feels yeah I was Vasco with yours um having I was going to ask you about you know working with kids um was that I was going to say like how 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 was your approach with that like did you find it quite difficult to work with children um because naturally they say children are difficult to work with because obviously they're a kid and but now you say that you pick people from that background did that make it a little bit easier I mean it definitely made it more real um but that make it a bit easier to work with them and, and to make sure they, you know, understood what they were doing? Well, first of all, I think kids are natural, natural actors, you know, like it's part of, of, of a kid's behavior to adapt uh, to, to society, to society rules. So they grow up with, with that mindset. Um, and it, it's funny because both of them, they had different personalities. And for example, Ellie, the, the little girl, she didn't want me to to talk with her as an actor because she didn't have any experience. So she wanted me to explain everything with detail. And, and Pete, the, 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 other, the other kid, he wanted me to talk with him as an adult, as an adult you know, because he had uh, some experience with, with his cousin. He made a short film, like a, look, a homemade short film. And he said, no, I have experience. You can talk with me. I'm an actor, you know. These little 12 year old, little, you know, <laughs> and so I had to change my mindset all the time while I was communicating with, with both. I had to communicate as I had to play pretend with Ellie, you know, uh, talk with her as, as, as I'm talking with the kid and put a lot of effort in trying to explain what I, what I was trying to achieve with that scene in particular. And, for example, she was really surprised with all the camera gear that we had on set. So we had this big monster, this camera, the Alexa Mini, which is enormous. And it was something coming from a sci-fi movie for her, you know. So we, I showed her the camera, I let her touch the buttons, you know. I let her clap the, the slate, 
so she could be more comfortable in that environment and everything was familiar for her and yeah it was it was challenging in that sense and then they I had to talk with him in another way so I was constantly okay so I need to talk with Ellie in this way I had I have to talk with David in this way and I have to talk with the crew in in this way and then in the crew everybody has different personalities and part of my job is to adapt to each individual personality to extract the best of them you know the best uh, yeah. it sounds kind of stressful it's like ha like your head must certain days especially when you're shooting long days your head must have just been spinning sometimes well i forget to eat sometimes man and i just remember that i need to eat after nine ten hours shooting mm -hmm. and it's it's all it's almost when like when you are playing music so you get to this state to the zone you know like to this state of flow Mm -hmm. And everything just happens and you don't really put any effort when you are doing it because everything happens with a certain flow, with a certain rhythm. So mm -hmm. I, I get to that point when I am working with these people because we know each other so well and, and we can do this with our eyes closed sometimes. And we, it's like we are playing jazz in a, in a way, you know. So it's not stressful at all in that sense. It's actually pleasant. You just need to remember to look after yourself at the same time, though. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, say again? I uh, said so you just need to remember to look after yourself at the same time, though. That, like, I've worked on many things where people are almost nearly, like, collapsing. I get what you mean, like, when you're in the thick of it and it's kind of, like, a bit obsessive and, you know, you want to make sure you push on, you do actually forget about yourself. And especially in a director role, I always saw that as... Uh, it's not something I, I think I could do. Um, so I, I commend you for doing that and being able to to communicate with people on a lot of different levels, especially with like actors, I think to get the best out of everyone. It's like you were saying, you have to almost, you were almost acting at times. Yeah, I, I, I feel that sometimes. And every actor has different needs. Some, some actors need a friend, some actors need a father, some actors need a brother, some actors, so I need to be what they want, what they need. And some actors need to be micromanaged, for, for example. Some others need some freedom to achieve their best talent, right? Their best uh, performance. But that's something that comes with rehearsals and with the several meetings in pre-production. But on the day, you just truly know an actor on the day, on, on, on the shooting day, you know? You can have in all these meetings with him, with her, but when he steps on that set, on the first take, you're going to understand what you need to do the entire shooting. So then you need to adapt really fast Nadine, do you find it's sorry? Uh, I was just gonna say to Nadine, do you find do oh. you find it difficult? Is is that something you have to do to navigate working with a lot of different people? Um luckily I wasn't in a director role when I was working on Wet and Soppy, but um I do have to say from being able to just go straight in as an animator and just get on with the job was so stress relieving because normally with the university you're involved in every step of the creative process. So mm -hmm. that was a novelty in itself. Um, after I finished, I kind of was back to working on myself. So suddenly I found myself responsible for writing and thumbnailing and storyboards and roughs and cleanup. And um, kind of like what Vasco was saying, you need to kind of just be someone that wears many hats in production and even though with my personal projects I'm not working with anyone I almost feel like I'm managing because on top of all that you also need to look into the future and be like okay so once I do this where is this going to go is it going to go on social media am I going to try and build a following um is it potential to be in a um film festival next year if I get it done in time yeah I think sometimes I need to micromanage myself a bit better. <laughs> mm. yeah. Vasco, would you ever see yourself involved in any sort of directing that would take on sort of more fantasy themes or incorporate things like animation uh, and stuff like that? Or do you have a, a, a style that you're you're willing to stick with for now? Well... That's a good question. I, I have this particular style that I want to develop, but I think each story has its own needs. 
So I'm not going to try to put my voice on the project. I'm going to try to look, I'm going to try to find the story's voice in a way. So it's almost like an actor. An actor adapts to each project, right? Uh, they are not always the same character. So I'm going to try to do the same I'm, as a director. I'm going to try to play the movie's character in a way, as, a, as an actor do. And I'm going to adapt to each project's needs, and I'm going to decide the aesthetical needs, the, um, the, the, fant the fantasy elements. If the story asks for it, obviously I'm going, to ha I'm going to be happy to do it. Yes, that's something that I, that I always will. Actually, I want to try that one day. It's super exciting. Mm. What about you, Nadine? Do you see yourself maybe moving away from fantasy and doing stuff that maybe is... I mean, for animation, naturally, um, you know, is very different than, like, sort of documentary style. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would, would you change Sorry. your... Sorry, now I was just saying, would you change sort of your, your interest? Um, to be honest, actually, I did work on an animated uh, documentary in my undergrad um, as part of a team. And... It was to do with um, pet ownership and eventually pet loss. And it was a very heavy subject and we accidentally made it, well, not accidentally. I guess that was the meaning that um, we did well, that many people cried. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it just depends. Like I, per, my personal preference is fantasy-based storytelling, but um it really just depends on the story. I think as long as the story's interesting and that you have a personal connection with it, it's always going to end up being something that you're proud to have worked on. Mm. So I guess never say never. Just sort of, I'll see what stories come to me sort of instead. Has the, has the recent, because I know you, you sort of mentioned earlier, you know, being aware of the circumstances and the surrounding you've been in now. Um, will that impact your work heavily? Because naturally, this situation, I mean, I suppose you could go either way. You could show the grit and the, you know, how it's been kind of heavy and difficult for people. But you can also enter that fantasy element to escape it. Um, I don't know, do you see that sort of going through your work or are you just going to try and avoid it? And... Um, I think the project I'm currently in the middle of brainstorming is going to be dealing with themes of isolation and loneliness but part of me almost doesn't want to make it overly gritty because people kind of had such a prolonged experience of this um, that you almost don't want to remind them of what it was like in the early days you're almost like there is a going to be an end of this at some stage there's optimism ahead at least we'll have to keep telling ourselves this because you know, it could still be another year for all we know that we're dealing with these kind of circumstances. Um, that's not to say it should be avoided, but um, it really depends on your audience. Uh, with animation, you try and make it just as appealing to as many people. Um, but for me, I just want it to be me sharing my experience in case somebody else feels like they're going through something alone. Like, um, as I was saying earlier, like there's people who have been learning new skills, baking banana bread and seem to be managing relatively okay. But for other people, this has been a very dark time. And I just want to create something that reminds them that you're not on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I, I mean, I, I am someone that sort of you know, gets energy from other people. Um, you know, I like busy environments. And I didn't really know that about myself as much as I do now. Um, especially when there's also that feeling of having a long day of working on something and then being in different environments, maybe cut your home being a sanctuary away from that. And now it's all just one thing. Like, yeah. it's great that people are helping you, you know, uh, advance your stu your home studio. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I kind of like to keep those things separate. I don't yeah. know about you guys. <laughs> Vasco, I can imagine with you, once you had, you know, dealing with 20 people a day, you like to be able to come home and get away from that. Um, and the environments have just become a bit blurred now, I think. Yeah, it's... I'm, I identify myself with, with what you were saying. I, I like to have my 
my workplace and my comfort zone where I can rest. But and congratulations, Nadit, for for the for the um, home studio. That's Thank great. You. Thank you very much. But that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> for sure. no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. sorry no, I was going to say it wouldn't work for me either. Yeah, it's it's tough. I've accepted it <laughs> for the future, well, for the time being. But um, I would agree. Um, that's one thing that I missed when I was at university. Um, just being able to go to a different building, and even if you're working on your own stuff, you're in a room with other people who are also going through their own projects, and you can. There's like a camaraderie between you all where it's like, yeah, this is a stressful time. I'm going through a bit of work here and it's I've been here 24 hours. The security men have changed over and changed back in the time I've been in this building. But we're in it together and mm -hmm. we're making some cool stuff. So to be in your home <clears throat> and to just have a different room to work in and then you go back to the other room when you're done for the day. Um, it's it's tough and it does have an impact on your motivation to continue with your work, I would definitely say. Mm. Speaking of, you said people have been making banana bread and so on. Have either of you two picked up a new skill or a new interest in here, which might affect your work? It might not. It might be completely separate. But ha has there been any sort of new interests? Mm. Well, I I didn't, I didn't use my quarantine time as well as I could, but I tried to learn German, for example. I tried to take some courses online, and uh, I've read a lot. I've, I've read a lot, at least like 15, 20 books. Gosh. <laughs> about about um, not, not practical books, about uh, cinema or whatever, but uh, literary classics because I was looking for new ideas for stories. So that helped me in that sense, because I'm, I have a lot of ideas at the moment that I, I really, I feel confident about them. And I want to develop, develop them because I actually had time to think about it. Because maybe if I was in this daily life rush, I wouldn't have time to sit and just write something. Maybe when I when I was at uni, I used to do that because I, I, I felt the pressure. But on my own, that's really hard. When you decide for yourself, no, I'm going to sit down and write. That, that's really hard sometimes. Um, if you don't feel it, if you don't feel this pressure. And as, as I was saying, I, I really miss to be with my crew, brainstorming, you know, all together in the same table. Because when we do Zoom calls, it's just so different. We we wait for our time to talk, and we are super formal. And when we are all together, we are just the, all these, you know, these 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 friends sitting on a table, just being creative and debating ideas. And we stand up and we walk and we laugh and we, you know, we. It's just as being in a pub in a way, <laughs> but you know. And I miss that because the best creative moments come out from those conversations when you are just being natural and you when you are being so formal and in a Zoom call and editing is the worst. But yeah, no, I agree with that. It's like it's kind of like what we're doing now. Like I, I always think of like when I'm working with people and stuff like that, and you're pacing around the room and you're like, what if this happened or what if that and then stuff like that and it's all the movement isn't it it's like mm -hmm. the energy um i mean it's interesting i think reading that many books is time well spent even if it's not necessarily like completely relevant to your career or whatever reading that much is good i mean i just i uh listen to a lot of audio books because i know it's kind of it's like kind of cheating i think but um i was it's interesting you say like classics i just listen to the the old man in the sea um by hemingway um just because i thought i should probably listen to some classics i don't know why but like hemingway as well that's it, it, uh, paris is a party but that one i need to read it still mm, it's what well, it's it's staggering like with, with that book 
the way he tells that story, like it became very quickly apparent why it's a classic and why he is so famous. And it's such a different style. For example, if you put the story of that book down um, and you pitch it to someone, they'll be like, yeah, I don't know. But the way he tells it and the way he keeps you involved and his descriptions of it, it really made me think about a lot about different work I do and whether I should reconsider a lot of different things. Um, so that's, that's definitely, you know, I'm sure I'm reading 20. I'm sure you've got like tons more ideas now. Yeah, and definitely Hemingway is, is a master on that. I, I, as I said, I, I've read uh, Paris is a Party, and if I tell you, this is just this dude talking about these nights in Paris, you will tell me, who cares? But the, the book is amazing, you cannot stop reading. Yeah. And, and that's and that's that's what I try to, to achieve on, on my job as a director, is to make a boring story an incredible, interesting story. And... I'm pretty sure Nadine is going <laughs> to try to do the same and that's sometimes the story is so strong that you can take components from it and the story, if it's strong, is going to work and it can be a different narrator, it can be a different director and the story is always going to work. But I'm not in that point yet. I'm, I'm going to, if I write my stories, I'm not a good writer, so I'm going to try to do what Hemingway does, which is directing a bad story, which is not bad. These stories are great, but you know what I mean. They're mm -hmm. stories and they end up being good. It's, uh, I was look, uh, watching an interview with uh, Luke Wilson, Owen Wilson's brother, who, and both of which are involved in a lot of Wes Anderson films. And he was talking about the fact that he, he never had ambitions to be an actor and they were sort of talking about um, whether he was good at remembering his lines and stuff like that or something that came naturally to him. And he made the point that if it's good work, if it's written well, and this applies to anything, if it's done well, then the people around you do find it easy. Um, you know, that, so if you write a script or you're directing something that's done so well, then it doesn't matter if you've got kids, you've got, you know, people that have never acted before. It, it's easy for everyone to follow and everyone gets the, the idea of it straight away. And, that can be so hard because I think we all try because life's complex, isn't it? I mean, it's so hard to like decode it. Um, and that's I've I've done a lot of writing recently, and I found that so hard. Like, do you want a story that's uh, appealing and interesting and gets everyone going from the start? You want people to be hooked instantly, but often, like when you start with fireworks and everyone's like, "What the hell's going on?" and you like lose people at the same time. Um, so yeah, I I agree with you Vasco it's so difficult to to write and um but yeah if you're doing if you're following Hemingway I think you're you're on the right <laughs> the right road I guess yeah um what about you Nadine do you do you read um to be honest I've, I haven't really read a whole lot during lockdown um I've mostly just been trying to keep myself entertained so um I think nearly everyone in the country tended to watch um, like Tiger King at the start of lockdown. Um, this probably is really contrasting, but um, I, I like watching like Pick TV and like CBS reality, you know, like the crime documentaries. I find them really fascinating. So in the evenings, I would tend to sit down and, you know, enjoy them and learn about forensic science and about. Um, police activity and how crimes that are 20, 30 years old get solved with advancements in DNA. It's all fascinating stuff. So it, I, I I, feel like I should be reading a bit more, but at the time I was just kind of like, you know, I want to see my friends. I can see them virtually in Animal Crossing. So let's all go and have an Animal Crossing party, you know, that kind of situation. Well, that's like, do you, um, wherever you get like inspiration, even joy from, I think people, I think people underestimate, um, you want to be, you know, know the classics well, we all want to be very intellectual and, you know, smart, but like to get enjoyment and interest and intrigue out of anything is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is, even if it's Animal Crossing. I mean, I haven't played Animal Crossing, but I know it's sort of blowing up a bit in lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's but, just, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just saying my girlfriend plays Animal Crossing every day. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> it, it's just one of those games that the novelty of being able to actually see your friends even in a virtual environment is better than nothing. 
Well, is that like as an animator? Is that like quite interesting for you? Like, um, I mean, I have, have not thought about it. No, um, animation and games tend to be linked together actually quite um, familiarly. Like, um, two of my friends actually have been working on a game throughout lockdown with their company that they work for. So I'm aware with game development and I would tend to play different games as well. Like, I'm still trying to finish Dragon Age, still trying to finish Horizon Zero Dawn. Ended up giving up on Death Stranding for a little bit and watched a YouTuber play it instead <laughs> just because I wanted to experience the story, but I wasn't getting time myself, especially with my um, uni deadlines, to experience it firsthand. But I still enjoyed it quite immensely, just watching somebody else play it. I actually find it past the hours greatly, and I'm sitting going, I'm going to give that game another go because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed experiencing it through this other person. Would you ever take... get involved in, in gaming as an animator? Um, I'm looking forward to the PS5 launch later this year. Um, it would be great to work on games design, but um, my first love is 2D animation. That's not to say I wouldn't ever give it a go. It would be fantastic to work on something that someone then gets to play down the line. Like I have young niece and two nephews that are already obsessed with watching other kids play things on YouTube like that's a that's a thing now isn't it it's... yeah and it would be great to be involved in something that maybe 10 years down the line they can say hey my auntie worked on that mm, that, yeah that'd be really cool Vasco mm -hmm. would you ever work to do with games I know some games the storylines are getting so detailed and crazy I know it seems it's very different from what you're working on now but yeah I never I never actually thought about that I, that's not on my on my plans um, no, definitely. I think I think it's not going to happen. I'm open to new experiences, but if I really want to be focused on film, I I I'm I don't imagine myself doing that in the future. Yeah, to be I fair, that's a massive leap. I've asked you, you know, what you consider this changing to gaming is a big one. <laughs> no, it would definitely be really fun. I think it would be one of those. You, I always kind of wanted some things in life, like to do a voice on The Simpsons would be an amazing. Yeah. Like, or to like do a voice on like GTA, be mm -hmm. like a voice on that. They're like little things that I think just for the novelty. So you'd be like, oh, I'm actually in a Simpsons episode. Yeah, yeah. never happen, sadly. <laughs> um, but they're, they're like some of my low key ambitions that I hope will come true. Maybe, maybe the, if you ever get a gaming job, uh, Nadine, hook me up with a, with a voice. It can be really basic. It can be really basic. I don't care what it is. I'll be like a tree or something. I don't care. I'll hear that in mind. But then again, Simpsons has been going a long time. There's still hope yet. <laughs> hope yet. Um, uh, let me, that's interesting that we are talking about, about games because I just remind uh, this new format um, of uh, either TV shows or film on Netflix in which you can uh, control your the faith of the character. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. For example, or Bear Grylls, the new uh, Bear Grylls show in which you can decide what it does. So he has this mission. He needs to save uh, this dog in the middle of a mountain. And he says, okay, so I'm here. Should I go through the forest or should I go uh, through the river? If I go through the forest, I'm, I have the possibility of finding a tiger. If I go through the river, I have the possibility of finding a crocodile. So you decide. And then you decide and he does it. So that's a game in a way. Uh, that's something that I could do. Mm, it, there was that Black Mirror one as well, wasn't there? Yeah, Black Mirror did it as well. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, man. It's really cool, actually. I I love it when people are trying, and obviously it's not going to work every time. But you you know, for people putting themselves out there, um, I mean, that's that's again why I go back to the fact that I love doing the degree shows and and camera students because. You know, yeah, some people miss sometimes, but like it's such a great opportunity to to just go for it. Um, before we go, is there anything else either of you would like to talk about? Um, I'll help like put up a little bit of information about you guys on our website and stuff, so people know where to find like some of your work and you know contact details and things like that. Oh, thank you. But anything else? You go first, Nadine. 
Oh no, I think I need a wee minute just to think if that's okay. I wasn't expecting that question. I should have been more prepared. It's not, it's not like a you have to say the most profound last minute, you know. It's just like it's there. Well, I, think it's... I think me and Vasco have talked quite um a bit now about our personal experiences with storytelling. And I know that you said that you telling us about the history of dropout, you were telling your own story. I was just wondering on a personal level, what sort of things would it be that you would enjoy or, you know, would like to see more of from independent artists? Um, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, over time, um, I've, you know, done a lot of projects that dealt with, um, you know, social or environmental issues, um, you know, sort of stuff like Vasco's was probably more the the type of work we'd showcase rather than animators um, and, and to do a fantasy. Um, so, you know, I would be more interested in, in, in seeing how um, you know, a, a broader range of work, you know, more into the sort of the fiction and fantasy world um, can represent, you know, different issues around the world and, and we can value their importance. Um, so I think I think that's definitely something I want to look into a bit more. Uh, and I also just want to uh, do stuff like this more. Like I want to actually get to know the people um, that I talk to and that I work with. It's not just a case of, here's Vasco's film or here's Nadine's animation and film like uh this is what it's about you know what what drove that person and um, why did they do it uh and you know and to get off on those tangents about video games about being in the Simpsons and stuff like that because I think that's all so important and it really um shows you know the making of a person and I think I and I, I enjoy much more having a bit more personal moments with people because i think before when i was you know showcasing people's work people were very happy to just send me like um copy or a statement you know um press statement and just sort of move on and i you know it felt a bit flat for me and i don't know about them as well so yeah I, i'm interested in anything weird and wonderful and why people came up with them um so yeah i think moving forward a bit more of that would be interesting. Oh, that sounds lovely. Even just from a personal aspect, getting to know the creator just makes you appreciate the work that much more. Mm. And getting to, on the opposite side of that spectrum, being able to talk to the people that are looking at your work and getting their feedback and finding out how they relate, like um, what you were saying about um, social, um, economic issues, environmental issues, those are all things that I feel could be brought into animation in mm. different ways it's it's stuff to think about and that's the only like I think what I'm trying to say is you only really consider these things properly when you get to interact with people and discuss why it's important mm. it's and, it, and even if it's the social or economic or environmental aspects of your life for example you're an animator that's had to stay home a lot recently um, you're having to adapt to a home studio, you graduated late, you know, they, they're all big factors that can influence your work or tell us, you know, a bit more about your work indirectly as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, t I totally agree. It's it's all stuff that's that's valuable information. And I don't know about you guys, but once I hear a bit about, yeah, about, about the creator a bit more, I'm often a lot more invested like for example if i'm hearing you know vasco's next film and i know he's been reading a lot of classics or like you said earlier when you uh spent time uh working on you know studying more the the logistical side let's say the business and stuff behind filmmaking and how you can get your stuff out there then i, I kind of like root for people a lot more um, yeah i totally uh, agree with that um it's great what you're doing man it's it's really great and it's uh, are you an artist yourself so i so the things i work on i do sort of like stand up and sketch comedy um and then i also do like uh, kind of like radio related stuff um a lot of podcasts um 
and so my more creative aspects probably more in comedy like in terms of like creating stuff but the reason i wanted to start dropout is is it dropout had like a, a more of a wholesome aspect in terms of i wanted to help people um because I, I was really frustrated with um you know a lack of community sometimes within um the creative community i know it's kind of a rat race and we're all trying to get up on what each other and you know have our moment in the spotlight um and then i also knew there was a lot of social projects and stuff um that didn't get any attention at all because often you know homelessness isn't cool or interesting it's uh, you know and it was trying to make that stuff almost more appealing in a sense um which sounds weird but like it's more appealing that for people to take an interest and to invest in those things so we can sort of sort them out in, in a way like we've done campaigns where we planted uh trees it was like a social media campaign we planted trees we did uh, on valentine's day you could buy you know instead of being superficial and buying your girlfriend or boyfriend a teddy or some chocolates you could buy a homeless person a meal because that's a better date and you know that's your valentine's day that's like the best date you should ever go on you know someone get a meal um so that's like the wholesome side of my brain and uh, more practical and then comedy was more like i had like an evil side a dark side of <laughs> being stupid and silly and i found you know that balance in my life actually works really perfectly now unfortunately i have to work as well and i do a lot of uh, manual labor work and um, god knows what you know i'm the type of guy that people are like oh, i need someone to move all this rubble or knock down a wall <laughs> so i get a call so <laughs> that's kind of my life but you know I, I i enjoy the balance of it all and um yeah I, i'm i'm just you know grateful for the opportunity to be inspired by you know the guy before you guys that did fine art there was two a fine artist and a photographer i you know typically you don't know what you're going to get from people like that because i'm not i don't paint i don't but i feel like these are, are such rewarding conversations yeah that's true i know i don't have usually i don't have the opportunity to talk uh, about other artists' motivation if I don't meet them personally. Or, and mm -hmm. now in the lockdown, we don't have that opportunity, right, to go out and just go to events and uh, even at university that could be possible, but it's not possible anymore. So I really appreciate this kind of initiative. And you, you have your side job, as you were saying, and you still have motivation to carry on with this project, and that's, that's, that's amazing. And I really appreciate for that. No, and, and if you guys are interested, like, I think I've got, um, I think there's going to be a total of about 12 people that are doing this that I've selected. Um, so if you guys, as I release them online and put up some, like, highlights of each conversation, if you guys want to talk to anyone else, um, I'll also try and set that up. Like, I don't have to be involved. Like, that's, because that's the best thing. Like, knowing that the people that won the competition last year are still talking with each other. I saw them in a photo of them in Paris together. I was like, oh my God, oh my gosh. You know, I, I hope people get married so I can be at weddings and be like, that's me. I set them all up. Um, so yeah, just let me know if you, if you want to talk to anyone else that we feature. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy. I mean, are you, where are you guys based like right now? So I'm, I, go on ahead, Vasco. I was saying that I'm in London, North London. Okay. I'm based in sort of Surrey, South London. What about you, Nadine? Belfast. <laughs> Fast. Uh, yeah. I mean, if if I'm ever in Belfast or you're ever over here, um, you know, I I kind of want to get an idea I have for after lockdown. Um, and I'm sorry, Nadine, this will be London based. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but I kind of wanted to to almost like celebrate us all being able to go out together. I want to do a day where we get loads of different people together, um, whether you're a filmmaker, d artist, painter, anything, and we come together and we make something collaboratively, whether it be an art piece or a little film, or we do something. And like the emphasis is naturally on the final product. It's just like all these different people coming together, celebrating collaboration, which is you know the backbone of the creative industry, really. Um, and you know yeah having a having a, a drink and stuff like that um so yeah Vasco, if you're still around london or nadine if you want to get on a a plane over that that will hopefully be something we do um you know when when we can that sounds fantastic being surrounded with so many creatives that that would be 
would be great from different fields, you know, like a photographer, a, mm. a writer, a, a designer, uh, an animator, a filmmaker. That that would be you. You would have so 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 many, so many interesting conversations. I'm totally down for that, man. <laughs> you can create really cool stuff as well. You can maybe there is a way of collaborating. Yeah, definitely. I think. Well, I think as well, like, I just want to, like, invest kind of inwards like that. Like, like I mentioned, from having Dropout as kind of like a, as a magazine, um, wasn't really rewarding. Because, like I said, uh, people would, I'd showcase people's work, but they, they sort of took what they can and then you never hear from them again. Whereas focusing more on these kind of projects, you actually, you know, you're all investing in each other. So, like, everyone cares a bit more. And, um, yeah, it's not like... You know, it's not focusing your work on likes and social media reaction. It's actually focusing on the here and now and, you know, being together. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm trying to move my life towards. Um, and let's hope we can make some money. Cause... That's a good reference to Hemingway because back in the time, back in the days in Paris, they used to be all together, Hemingway, Picasso, all those creatives in the same room, just debating ideas and um, and politics and all of that. But there was the the golden times back in Paris, and I, I would love to feel that, you know, to be surrounded by creatives and just talk and just change ideas and just like you were saying, walking around the room and yeah, debating, you know, and. I, I would like to have that. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great idea. Yeah, like just the personal aspect of it, like humans talking to one another. I know you said about the rat race, but I just I know it's the nature of the business, but it's so frustrating at times. I always prefer to see it as, and I'm probably butchering this quote, but a high tide raises many boats. Yeah. You know, life's hard enough. We should all just be supporting each other's creative endeavors because, you know we're all just benefiting from each other's success yeah. and in turn that's inspiring the next generation and the generation after that mm. yeah I, I i agree with that i love that quote as well um and yeah i will definitely read some more hemingway actually you, you got me interested Glasgow. me too uh, <laughs> guys thank you so much um like i said i will keep you guys posted with what i'm doing like in terms of posting stuff online and like if you need anything um and like yeah we'll put up a little bit about you guys so i want to represent you guys in the best way possible um so whatever you want me to show like work wise or a little bit about yourself then um you know i'll ask you guys about that soon as well no worries thank you very much for having us as part of this today it was fantastic to be thank chosen you. The person. Right. it's great it was great all right well i'll speak soon Bye now. Yeah. Bye. Bye.